Now, you remember a couple of months ago, the Chief Constable of Northumbria Police called on us to challenge rowdy behaviour like swearing and drinking, and now his comments have been backed by the think tank Reform. In a report out this morning, it claims we're a nation of passive bystanders, uh, uninformed about crime and unlikely to take part in maintaining justice. And it says a centralised robocop justice has made Britain the most expensive country to police in the world, and it calls for sentences to be decided at a local level. Let's talk to the author of this report, Lucy Parsons. Morning, Lucy. Morning, Mike. Are you saying then that we should take the law into our own hands? Um, yes, to an extent, but I think it's also about a change in the public's attitude towards uh, crime and criminal justice. Um, as we say in the report, UK citizens are passive bystanders. Um, over here, six out of ten people are unlikely to challenge a group of boys vandalising a bus shelter compared to um, our counterparts in Germany, where six out of ten would. So we think this needs to change. There needs to be more responsibility from people. Yeah, but we, there was a good reason for not taking part. You know, you might get uh, clobbered back. Obviously, we're not saying that uh, you should always intervene in every circumstance. People need to use their judgment. But it's about this change in attitude, people seeing criminal justice as their responsibility, rather than at the moment, um, I think it's around 76% of Britons see it as a responsibility of police and courts. And that's much higher than uh, in our continental counterparts, for example, in Germany, where it's only 43%. And what's wrong with leaving it to the police and the courts? What's wrong with it? Well, we feel that, you know, people should be empowered. It's it's our country. It shouldn't be left in the hands of just authorities. And, you know, clearly the current system isn't delivering. There's very low innovation. Um, Reoffence rates remain high. The Home Office has admitted that where crime has um, improved, where rates have fallen, it's largely due to economic factors rather than better policing, so for example, better alarm systems and so on. So if we want to see better results, we think that people need to take uh, criminal justice back into their hands. And you'd like to see more decisions about sentencing being made at a local level. What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, exactly. We'd like to see locally elected justice commissioners um, who are responsible for end-to-end -end criminal justice services. So from everything from prevention to policing, prosecution and so on, so that people have a say in who is responsible for this and there's greater accountability rather than all control being at the centre. But haven't we got judges and magistrates that, that do that already? I think there's, there's a level of uh, localisation in this country, but it's uh, restricted by central targets and standards. You know, we almost have a sort of policing by numbers system, if you like, where there is some uh, devolution of power, but it's very restricted. And if you look at, for example, America, Germany, federal systems, um, you can see it works much better there, where uh, local authorities have real power, and that kind of limits the control at centre. Right, well, let's bring in Chris Bath from Unlock, which is the uh, National Association of Reformed Defenders. Morning, Chris. Good morning. Do you agree? No, no, I think the report starts off relatively sensible. We can agree on the fact that crime's been overly politicised and the Conservatives and Labour, and everybody wants to sort of take a chunk of it to try and get voted back in again. Uh, I think we can also agree that it has been overly, overly centralised and the idea of local authorities taking a bit more power and a bit more control is a, is a good idea as well. Um, certainly the government's attempt at things like noms and the Titan prisons are an absolute disaster uh, in one case waiting to happen. But I think on the, on, the, on the sort of passive bystanders, yes, we are scared. I think one of the big issues is it'd be nice if the police turned up sometimes when we sort of actually, you know, uh, rang, rang. I think it's a bit rich to sort of just ask the general public to try and solve this issue by kind of jumping in there particularly when there's, you know, been reports of people being attacked back. Yeah, but, but really, this is about bringing back some kind of collective community responsibility, Chris, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, and I think communities you know. can take a lead on that, and I think she's, uh, that uh, Lucy's absolutely right to say that, uh, that, that we're kind of detached from what's happening in crime and punishment, and if people want to wander down to their nearest prison or, or sort of uh, probation and want to get involved, then I'm sure those uh, services which are struggling under magic, massive budget cuts... Um, would really value people turning up and saying, what can I do to understand this and what can I do to help? It would be a start, wouldn't it, if everybody joined their, uh, you know, local neighbourhood watch, wouldn't it? That, that, that would be a start. <clears throat> Absolutely. I think we've definitely got to look after each other. Absolutely. No, no, no shadow of a doubt. But um, I think that, uh, you know, as you, as you said, magistrates can already uh, make local judgments. The, 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 the government doesn't control what the judiciary uh, does, if you like. Um, so... 
but I think that some of the, some of the reports, I mean, you've not mentioned it, within this report, they, they're talking about a, a completely accessible online public access database for offenders, um, which basically means you could look up, you know, and get text alerts every time someone moves into your uh, area who's had a previous conviction. I think with seven uh, what, point, What's wrong with that, then? Well, there are 7.4 million people on the offend, government's offenders index already, so... Um, I'm, you know, I'm not a big person for everyone having everyone's identity trackable on an internet database. Yeah, but if a murderer or a paedophile moved into your street, wouldn't you want to know about that? Well, it's a, it's a former murderer or former paedophile, but the difference is you can have a particular debate about those things. And to be honest, after a 14-year-old girl died in the UK after the house she was burnt down, uh, the house she was living in was burnt down after someone thought it had a child molester in it, I think you've got to be careful about sort of passing on that information in a completely unrestricted way. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Lucy. Ian Dormer is here, the Managing Director of Rush Engineering. Uh, would you like to know, then, if a, a convicted uh, murderer or paedophile was about to move into your street? <coughs> Thanks for difference between like to know and should know. Because like to know, yes, I would. But I think as a society, we shouldn't necessarily start, for obvious reasons, as, uh, as your contributor there just mentioned, actually start you know, just recklessly sending out this information, particularly if they've spent their convictions and maybe they've reformed. You just don't know. Um, you know, the, the details are often uh, the, in the killer. One thing I was stunned, though, was 7.4 million people on the offenders' register. That's a huge number of people as well. By heck, I didn't realise we had so many, uh, so many convicts. Ian makes an important point there. He'd like to know, but should we know? 